Five questions the narcissist cannot answer. Myth. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Many of you who have been involved with a narcissist will have thought on multiple occasions, if only I'd known all of this at the beginning. Virtually every day, I'm contacted by somebody by email or in the comments on my blog or on YouTube or elsewhere stating, if only I'd had this information three years, five years, ten years ago, I'd have been saved so much pain. If only there had been a way to identify what I was dealing with at such an early juncture so that I would have not have become emotionally invested in this individual. I would not have had my heart broken. I wouldn't have had children with this person. I wouldn't have suffered financial problems. I would not have lost my job because of them, etc., etc. The cost to individuals as a consequence of their ensnarement with my kind need not be detailed. You're well aware of the impact that it has. And with that, of course, comes the desire to have avoided that. The fact is, that nobody spots us the first time that we come along. You simply do not. It's a combination of the fact that most people don't actually understand narcissism. Indeed, some people don't even know about it. And those that do tend to think it's some kind of self-obsessed individual who's always flexing his muscles in the mirror. And as you know, there are different shades of narcissists, different sub-schools, and it's far more detailed than just somebody who's completely self-absorbed with themselves and loves themselves. Accordingly, many people don't know about narcissism or have a misunderstanding about what it is and certainly don't have the breadth and depth of knowledge that would be required to make a meaningful analysis of an individual from an early juncture. Furthermore, the presence of emotional thinking causes individuals to have their views obscured so that even where they might spot a red flag, they don't actually pay attention to it. This means that when a narcissist first enters your life in a meaningful fashion, I mean, for instance, you haven't just been sold a newspaper by a narcissist working in a kiosk, but rather somebody that has targeted you, somebody who is drawing you into a romantic relationship, or is continuing to exploit you within the familial dynamic, or a boss that's causing problems for you at work who is a narcissist. It would, of course, be advantageous for you to have recognised what you're dealing with and understood what that meant so that you could have then implemented no contact before you suffered any kind of real cost. The fact is, nobody sees us coming first around. But then, once somebody has been through the mill with the narcissist and invariably has then understood more about what narcissism is and how those with narcissistic personality disorder function, you can take steps to protect yourself thereafter. I explain regularly in consultation what those detailed steps are so that you don't get caught out second time around, or third time, or fourth time. You will have seen that there are various instances where there are people touting certain questions that you can utilise for the purposes of identifying whether you're dealing with a narcissist. Now, it is correct that there are certain questions that you can ask which would help you make a determination as to whether you may well be dealing with a narcissist. But it's also the case that many of these questions that are advanced by well-intentioned people won't actually help you. Commonly, they're detailed as the five or ten questions you should ask to determine whether you're dealing with a narcissist, but they get it wrong. There are questions that you can ask which will elicit certain responses, which will enable you then to evaluate those responses to make an informed decision. It's not going to tell you automatically that you're dealing with a narcissist. You have to evaluate the response that you receive and look at it in context alongside other evidence. But there are questions that can help you. And I detail those in my logic bulletin. Narc repellent, which can be found in the knowledge vault. But it's also the case that 
other providers of information to out certain questions as enabling you to understand that you will be dealing with a narcissist. And unfortunately, many of these questions are inaccurate and wouldn't actually help you. I'm going to give you five examples of questions that purportedly a narcissist could not answer and demonstrate that this is actually a myth, so that you don't utilize those questions yourself when perhaps probing to find out if you're dealing with a narcissist, and you understand why these questions actually can be answered by narcissists. The first is, can you accept responsibility for your actions? As you know, the narcissist lacks accountability, because with accountability brings a threat to control, Accountability suggests that the individual must behave in a particular way, and therefore you will regularly see that a narcissist will behave in a way whereby there is an abrogation and rejection of responsibility. But here's the key. You need to be looking at their behaviours in relation to the issue of accountability. You need to be looking at how they conduct themselves, what they actually do vis-a-vis -vis responsibility. What are they like with regard to work? What are they like with regard to their relationships? What are they like with regard to their children? How do they deal with problems in a relationship? How do they deal with the provision of emotional support? You don't ask about those things. You watch and perhaps obtain evidence from other people about that behavior. You observe the behavior because that's your best guide. But if you say to a narcissist, can you accept responsibility for your actions? What do you think a narcissist is going to say? No, absolutely not. I can't. You know, I'm the most irresponsible person on the planet. I don't give a shit. Well, you might get some lower echelon narcissists that will go, responsibility for my actions. You've got to be joking. But the vast majority of narcissists, in order to fit in, and in order to control you in that moment, will tell you that they do take responsibility for their actions, and they may even give you an instance of how they have done so. To suggest that a narcissist cannot answer this question is incorrect, and it's a myth. Remember, when the narcissist is dealing with you one-to-one, -one, they must control you. When you ask a narcissist a question, such as, can you accept responsibility for your actions, you're threatening the narcissist's need for control, and therefore the narcissist needs to nullify that threat. And the simplest way to do so is to say, oh, absolutely. Yes, I can accept responsibility for my actions. And they may well invent, generated by the invention of their narcissism, an instance when that occurred. The narcissism facilitates this response to keep control over you. And as you know, it's very easy for the narcissist to say things. It's the doing that you need to look at, not the saying. The next question, which is touted as something that a narcissist cannot answer, but actually they can, is, can you handle criticism? Again, if you ask a narcissist this, you're threatening the narcissist's need for control, and the narcissist needs to nullify it. And the easiest way to nullify it is to say, yes, I can. There you are. Question is answered. The narcissist won't turn around and suddenly say, do you know what? No, I, I can't handle criticism whatsoever, because criticism is a threat to my need for control. And therefore, I can't deal with it when people criticize me. It really sets me off and my fury ignites. No narcissist would ever respond that way. First of all, an unaware narcissist wouldn't know about those things to talk about them. And an aware narcissist wouldn't admit to them because they'd recognize that that would be transferring power to the questioner, thus threatening their control further. Accordingly, whilst it is the case that narcissists struggle to handle criticism, and they're dependent upon the type of narcissist that you're dealing with. There are a variety of responses, ranging from a volcanic explosion to simmering rage. But the point is that if you were to ask the narcissist this question, it isn't one that they can't answer. They can, and the narcissist in that moment will tell a lie, although they believe the lie, by saying, yes, I can handle criticism. I 
take it on board and look to learn from it. I see criticism as a learning experience. Constructive criticism is useful. It helps me grow as an individual. Particularly upper lesser and mid-range narcissists, upper lesser A especially, will be able to come out with a load of word salad talking about how they deal with criticism. Thus again to suggest that this is a question that cannot be answered by a narcissist is simply wrong. A third question, which is regularly touted as one that a narcissist cannot answer, is can you empathise with others? Again, you might only find your lower echelon narcissist to go, no, I really struggle to empha, empha, what's the word again? But for the most part, a narcissist, again, as part of nullifying the threat to control posed by asking that question, will say that they can. The problem with questioning a narcissist in this way is that you're falling into the trap of allowing the narcissist to talk. Talk is cheap, and it's particularly so when it comes to the narcissist. As I've explained on many previous occasions, if the narcissist can achieve the prime aims through talking about it rather than doing, that's what happens. And thus, if you're seeking to find out whether somebody is a narcissist by asking these particular questions, all you're doing is allowing the narcissist to utilise talk in order to demonstrate that they can do the things that you're asking them. Even if you ask them to provide examples, the narcissist can lie and invent them. Of course, some of the lies may seem more plausible than others, dependent upon the subschool of narcissists that you're dealing with, but the fact is, you're not going to get a narcissist to suddenly admit, no, I can't emphasise with anybody at all, I f fail to understand or share the feelings of others. Instead, the narcissist, particularly mid-range narcissist, will say, oh, absolutely, I feel other people's pain. I regularly understand how people are feeling without them even needing to tell me. Remember, certain mid-range narcissists think that they are empaths, and they character trait acquire from empaths this concept of feeling the emotions of others without them necessarily being able to speak about them, and pass it off as something they experience themselves. Accordingly, Saying to a narcissist, can you empathise with others, is not a question the narcissist cannot answer. The narcissist can. Instead, of course, you need to be looking for examples of that emotional empathy in action. How does that person consistently treat people? Have they got long-standing friends? How do they behave in situations where they are called upon to help, to be supportive? Are they faithful to their partner? Are they loyal to their friends? How do they behave with regard to animals? Looking at the behaviour, the conduct and the actions is a far better gauge of the individual that you're dealing with than simply asking a question. Another myth question that apparently narcissists can't answer is, can you apologise? Now, it is the case that certain narcissists rarely apologise but again, remember, that's the action. So if you're with someone and you've noticed that they are always right and never apologise, there's a red flag for you. But also remember, there are certain narcissists that are hugely apologetic, but it's false contrition. They repeatedly say sorry, but then go and repeat the behaviour again. And there's your indicator. The indicator isn't in what they're saying, it's in what they're doing. That they're failing to a to demonstrate a genuine apology because if it was truly meant they would adjust their behavior thereafter once again you need to look at the behavior not at the words that are being said and once again simply saying to a narcissist can you apologize and thinking ah well a narcissist won't be able to answer that is wishful thinking and wrong whilst the narcissist of course is never wrong in their mind whilst the narcissist never accepts responsibility for their actions, whilst it's always somebody else's fault, that manifests through watching them in action, not by asking the question, can you apologise? If you ask, can you apologise of a narcissist, it's really easy. The narcissist will go, oh, absolutely, yes. I've apologised many times. I recognise when I've done things wrong. Again, 
it will only be in a small number of instances that you might get a lower echelon narcissist to go, no, I don't apologize. What have I got to apologize for? But your cleverer narcissists, the ones that are more evolved, recognize through cognitive empathy the appropriateness of apologies. They don't mean them. But mid-rangers believe that they do. Graters will issue apologies here and there, not particularly frequently, and know they don't mean them, but recognize the value in being seen to apologize in certain instances. The fact is, if you expect a narcissist to be revealed by asking the question, can you apologize, because you believe the narcissist can't answer that, well, you're wrong. And this is another piece of misinformation. Finally, the fifth question that has been touted as one that a narcissist cannot answer is, can you admit when you are wrong? Naturally, narcissists are never wrong, and this is linked into the issue of a issuing apology that I've just explained. But once again, even though the narcissist has that inflated sense of self-importance and of always being right, when you ask a narcissist, can you admit when you are wrong, that's a threat to control in that instant. And therefore, the narcissism will cause the narcissist to nullify that threat to control by simply saying, oh yes, I can admit when I'm wrong. They may go on to say, it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I readily admit when I'm wrong, and I make adjustments in my behavior. Some narcissists, for instance, middle, middle range A, middle, middle range B, will go, oh yes, I often make mistakes, it's part of being human, isn't it? And uh, I freely admit when I've cocked up. Again, that's being done in the instant to address the question that you have posed. And thus, the problem with the providers of information about narcissism that suggest that there are these questions that a narcissist cannot answer demonstrates their failure to understand narcissism properly. The fact is, you don't ascertain the narcissist by asking these questions. You observe their behaviours over a sustained period of time to look through actions, because it is in the actions that you find the narcissist. It's very easy for the narcissist to say certain things and very easy to do, deal with a direct question by saying, yes. So, for instance, can you accept responsibility for your actions? Yes, I can. There you are. See how easy it is. Can you handle criticism? Yes, I can. Can you empathize with others? Yes, I can. Can you apologize? Yes, I can. Can you admit when you are wrong? Yes, I can. Three simple words issue to all of those questions. Those questions are useless in the context of ascertaining whether you're dealing with a narcissist. And to suggest that a narcissist cannot answer them demonstrates a complete failure to understand how narcissists function. The fact is that they're poor questions and they are, of course, closed questions requiring a yes or no answer. You might get a little more mileage out of it if you asked... Can you explain to me an instance where you've shown us responsibility for your actions? That way, by making it a more open-ended question, you might see hesitation. You might get something that's rather vague that would set alarm bells ringing. More evolved narcissists will, of course, be able to spin a yarn in that regard, which would provide some plausibility. But you might catch more of the lower echelon ones. But the questions as phrased as I explain them, which I've seen repeatedly around the internet, and suggested that those are questions that a narcissist simply cannot answer, is wholly wrong. And you must be aware of that. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.